Hello friends, this video is in English. If you are interested in watching the same presentation in Hindi, kindly click on the link given in the description just below this video. Oftentimes you may have wondered what determine the name of the river when two or more rivers meet at the confluence point. So for example, when Ganga and Yamuna rivers are meeting at Priyagraj, what, why is it that the combined river is named Ganga and not Yamuna? Underlying this answer, we'll analyze some of the important river names in India. In doing so, we'll know, get to know some interesting and unknown facts about the major north, northern rivers of India, Ganga, Yamuna, and now lost Saraswati River. Also, we'll answer a very interesting question whose answer many of you might have might might be thinking is quite obvious, but it's not. And the question is, which actually is the longest river in India? So let's go ahead. So what decides the river name when two or more rivers meets at the confluence point? Well, as a rule, as a general rule, the two criteria that, det that determines the name of the river, the combined river. Either the name of the longest river is taken, so at that confluence point, whichever river is longer, either that name is picked, or the river which carries the largest volume of water, or in short, the, which is the largest river. So it's either the longest river or the largest river, depending upon the case, that river's name is chosen. Sometimes, because of some historical, spiritual, mythological reasons, the river is given an entirely new name. Or for some reason that we'll discover later on, the river is given an entirely new name for these very reasons. However, we should not forget that rivers are a very dynamic process like geology. Geo our geology is constantly changing and with it change the course of the river and the volume of the water river carries with it. Let's look at this map. This map shows the Tapovan glacier. Very close to this Tapovan glacier is the Gomuk glacier from where the Ganga river, from where the Bhagirathi river emerges which is considered as the source of Ganga river. Just close by is the Satopanth glacier. Now Satopanth glacier is from where the Alaknanda river emerges and where very close is the Tirth of Badrinath. In actuality, the volume of river water carried by Alaknanda is far higher. Let's move on to the next time. So let's look at this dynamic river process one. Bhagirathi, which emerges from the Gomba Glacier near uh, Tapovan, has a length of 205 kilometers till Dekpia. And the, ba the basin area, essentially the catchment, the catchment area of the volume of water is of 6,921 square kilometers. Alaknanda has a length of 190 kilometers, but a basin area of 10,882 square kilometers. So in effect, Alaknanda's volume of water is potential volume of water is about 55% more than that of Bhagirathi, although the river is a little smaller. So one, so Bhagirathi is a little longer, however, Alaknanda carries a lot more water, water than Bhagirathi. However, when they meet at Devprayag, the combined river is called Ganga. Now, there could be two reasons for this. First of all, is that there's a clash that is happening. Bhagirathi is a longer river. So logically, it's called the source of the river because it's a longer river. So that's why the name could have been Bhagirathi. But it's just about a little longer. However, Alaknanda is a huge river in terms of the volume of water it carries. That's point number one. Point number two is that we know the 
that there are historical and spiritual and mythological reasons behind it uh, the, about the king Bhagirath who discovered the source of Bhagirathi and who did, did a tap so that Ganga lands on the, the plains of India. And we know that at Dev Priyag is the major, last major confluence point after which Ganga comes and lands in the plains of India. So that's why this historical and mythological reason, apart from this, apart from this conflict between the length and the catchment area, is why the river here is named an entirely new river, which is called Ganga. Furthermore, let's come into, into the more interesting point. Here, as you can see, is the Swarg Rohini Glacier. From Swarg Rohini Glacier comes the Tons River, or what was earlier called thousands of, thousands of years back, the Saraswati River. Just below the Tons River, as the Swarg Rohini Glacier, is the Yamunotri Glacier. From where flows the Yamuna River. Now, they both meet at a place called Kalsi, which is about 50 kilometers from Dehradun in the Dune Valley. Details about the Saraswati River, if anyone is interested, I'll be I've done several videos on it, and I'll be link giving the links in the description. Now let's see this dynamic process too. Towns is the largest tributary of Ganga in terms of the water carried. Not just largest, it has a larger discharge than Yamuna. So the volume of water carried by stones is more than Yamuna. By rule, the name of the combined entity should be Tons or Arswal Saraswati. However, we still call it Yamuna. Even if we take the length into consideration, as you have seen on the map, Tons River has a, is a longer river because it's it uh, because it's higher because its glacier is higher than that of Yamuna. So why the combined river is called Tons? I'm sorry, it's called Yamuna and not Tons. The answer is that Tons was the starting stream of the erstwhile Saraswati River. This river used to flow from Uttarakhand, now the Uttarakhand state, to Haryana, Rajasthan, Gujarat, before draining its waters into the Arabian Sea. However, because of the geological movements of the earth's surface, that or in simple words earthquakes, the river changed its course and they dried up in its original channel and changing its course, it started meeting the Yamuna River, which was at that time, and I'm talking about 4,000 to 5,000 years old story, was a much smaller river. And it merged into Yamuna at Kalsi. And hence, and hence became this new Yamuna River, which was much larger and longer since Tons as a source has been added. However, as I said before, even though the rivers are dynamic process, since Yamuna was, the history of Yamuna River is much older than that, much older than 4,000 to 5,000 years old. The nomenclature of these rivers, of the sources, original sources of, the, of these rivers do not change. And so, even though the Tons is larger river and a longer river, the combined entity is still called Yamuna. Let's take the third dynamic process, which everyone must be aware of. It's the confluence of Yamuna and Ganga at Prayagraj in Triveni Sangam. Now at Prayagraj Triveni Sangam, Yamuna has a source length of 1,551 kilometers, which is a, which because of tons is about 370 kilometers more than Ganga. So Yamuna is a longer river than Ganga. And interestingly, it is a larger river than Ganga. It has a 58.5% water discharge, whereas Ganga is the rest means 41.5%. So then again, since Yamuna is a longer and larger river than Ganga, 
why at Tiagra the combined river is called Ganga and not Yamuna according to the rules. We fall to the same principle again. Yamuna and Ganga both are old, much older rivers. However, and they have been meeting around Pyagraj for ages. However, around 4000 to 5000 years back, because the Saraswati river changed its course and started meeting in Yamuna, that made Yamuna bigger and longer as you see in the previous slide. Although the combined entity of Yam, Yam, Ganga and Yamuna was was existing far far longer than this time period and so even though now as Yamuna stands now is a much longer and larger river this naming convention has not changed and still we call the river the combined, the, the combined river at the confluence of Priyagaraj as Ganga. So in conclusion what we learn that rivers are a dynamic hydrological and geogra geographical process change the course, they change courses, they ch and even the volume of water changes over a period of time. However, however, if, if, if we go strictly by the naming rules, then in a sense, Yamuna or Tons or even more accurately, even more accurately, Saraswati should be the longest river in India going strictly by the rules. Since Tons River extends, since Tons River extends the distance of Yamuna and hence the source of and hence the source of Ganga from Gomuk to Swargrohini. So since Tons River, since that river source of Tons, which is Swargrohini, and by the way, just as a small trivia, Swargrohini was the mountains as the Pandavas tried to climb in the final act of Mahabharata. So since Swargarohini is the source of Tons, which is 370 kilometers further away from the source of Ganga river, this should be the source of Ganga river or at least the Yamuna river. However, this has not been considered because again, his historical conventions don't change even though the rivers themselves change by in terms of course in terms of volume of water so technically technically it's really has to be the tons or the erstwhile saraswati river which has to be the longest river of india however since this phenomena is just 4000 to 5000 years old and the naming conventions of the rivers don't change that often so ganga which has been much which has been a much older river than this phenom than this phenomenon is still considered the longest river of india so thank you very much for watching this and do subscribe if you are interested in much more of this kind of information and you can also comment in case you want any clarifications thank you very much